Hello, and welcome to another Google Earth Outreach on-air training. My name is Karen, and I'm a program manager on the Google Earth Outreach team. Today, we're going to talk about creating data visualizations in Google My Maps. If you're watching this live and you have any questions during this training, feel free to ask your questions in the Q&A section just below this video on this page, and we'll do our best to answer them right away. With that, let's get started. Data and information communicated clearly on a map can be a powerful tool for awareness and education, from helping decision makers understand what's happening on the ground to helping residents find the resources they need quickly. In 2020, we've seen many people turn to Google My Maps to quickly and easily build map visualizations to help people stay informed during the COVID pandemic, including these shown here on this slide. And we'll dive into more of these in the next few minutes. Here's what we're going to cover today in this training. First, I'm going to give a really quick introduction to Google My Maps. Then I'll dive into some recent examples of, of My Maps. Next, I'll walk through how to build a map yourself, complete with searching for map data to import into your My Map. I'll review different options for styling your map data. And then finally, I'll end with best practices to optimize your map and make it as user-friendly as possible. So with that, let's dive in. Google My Maps is a super easy tool for creating simple maps. You can add points, lines, and shapes. You can import spreadsheets and map data, style and visualize that data, and then annotate that data with text and images and videos. You can also import photos by adding Google photo albums and importing those photos to Google My Maps. You can share your map with others to either view or even edit along with you. And then finally, you can share online, including embedding on your website or blog. Before I show you how to do it yourself, let's look at a few recent examples. Throughout 2020, we've seen government leaders and local nonprofits and universities and even the media use My Maps to merge the different, different data sets together and visualize and then share the latest information and resources in their area. Here's a great My Map. The nonprofit Let's Be the Change, based in Bangalore, India, partnered with the local authority BBMP to map food donation locations and other basic essential supplies during the COVID crisis. To create this map, they, not, they matched up several different data sets from different formats by importing spreadsheets with latitude and longitude coordinates and importing a geographic data set of the BBMP ward boundaries. Next, another great example is the Daily Voices map of COVID cases in the New York metro area. The Daily Voice created this My Map to track positive tests in the New York metro area and shading the colors of each county on the map by the density of COVID cases. Data sets from these three different state websites, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, were all merged together to form this map, giving a more complete picture of the entire tri-state area. To make a similar map, simply go to mymaps.google.com. Log in with your Google account, and you'll come to this page, the kind of the table of contents for Google My Maps. You can see these are all the maps either I've created uh, in Google My Maps or people have shared with me and I'm an editor or viewer on. The first thing you're going to want to do is click Create a New Map button, this big red button here in the top left corner. A new Google My Map opens. And in the layer list over here on the upper left-hand side of the map, you'll notice it says untitled layer. They've already added the first initial layer for you, but there's no data in it. Let's import a data set by clicking the import link here in this panel. Up comes a selection window where you can then import a data file from your computer or Google Drive. So I can either upload by clicking select from your device, which is what we'll do now. I'm gonna click that big blue button and I'm going to import a KML file that I have here on my computer. KML is an open geospatial format, which stands for Keyhole Markup Language. Your layer should import and appear on your map almost right away. 
If you click on a feature, then all of the data sets or all of the data, all the information about that place that was inside the KML file will be displayed there in the info window. You can see that I uploaded a KML of US shapes or US states. For lines and for shapes, that kind of map data, you're gonna to wanna to use KML files, but point locations can also be imported as a spreadsheet. Simply click add layer to add another layer to your map and then click import again. This time we're gonna import a spreadsheet. So first let's go look at the spreadsheet that we wanna import. This is an import, this is a spreadsheet of all the state capitals in the US uh, there's 50 states. These are 50, uh, these, this is going to have 50 rows or 51 with the title row. And you can see that it has a couple different um, uh, uh, columns. It has the state, the capital. It has the city state, which where I've combined the city with a comma and the capital. It has the year since it was the capital of that state, the area in square miles, and the population estimated in 2019. So let's go back to our map. And you can see this time I'm going to choose Google Drive. And I'm going to search for state capitals because that's the name of my spreadsheet in Google Drive. So there it is. I click on state capitals. It starts to import it. What you're going to need to do first is you're going to need to choose column that represents the position of your place marks or points. To import the table properly, you're going to want to make sure that you have a column with one of the following, either latitude, longitude information, or addresses, or place names. Now, you'll remember that in my, my Google spreadsheet, I had the city state, which contained the place names of city and then state. So I'm going to choose that column as my location. Then I can click continue. Next, you'll need to choose which column you'd like to, to name your points. So I'm going to choose capital. I'll choose capital, but I could choose any one of these. Click Finish. Now, I've just imported a Google spreadsheet, but we also, Google My Maps also supports CSV, comma separated value files, spreadsheets, as well as Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. So there I have it. Now, if I unselect this US states, I can see here's all my 50 state capitals. Once it's imported, sometimes it's uh, good to see the spreadsheet data behind the maps. So if I click on this three vertical dots next to my state capitals layer, I can choose to open data table. And there's the actual spreadsheet that I imported. And I can scroll down and I can see everything. I can change the spelling if something is spelled incorrectly. So this gives me a lot of control over the data that's shown in the balloons here. Here's, a, here's another tip around spreadsheets. They can be up to 40 megabytes in size and they can have up to 2000 rows. You can explore more advanced options for styling your points, your lines and your shapes. What you wanna do is you wanna click here on this um, uh, uniform style and it allows you to group and style by different uh, means. So for example, I can choose to change the, um, the uh, symbology of my points by choosing to symbolize by a specific data field. I can also change the icon. So if I click here on this little paint bucket that's next to this icon, all items, I can choose to, another icon for my points. If I click on more icons and I click on custom icon, I can uh, navigate to an icon that I choose. In this case, I downloaded a Creative Commons icon for a state capital. And you can see that I've added it as my uh, icon for all of my points on the map. Moving back to the US states, I can actually also uh, style by uh, field by clicking individual styles and I can choose to in, um, uh, um, style by a specific data column. So I can either um, style them uniquely for every 
50 state, giving it a different color, or I can actually style it by a numerical range. So if I want to look at this field right here, area of land, you'll see that it doesn't really work right. In fact, when I go into ranges here, I'm not able to select ranges. And that's because this is a text or a string column. And so because it was um, represented as a string column, I'm not able to style it numerically. So there's a trick that you want to do in Google My Maps to make this into a number. So if I go into open data table and I scroll to the right and I look at this, my columns, I can choose area of land or a land. I can duplicate it by clicking on this little drop down box right here to the right of a land, the, the column title, and choose duplicate. Now I can call this area of land or a land underscore num and I can choose to make it a number. Now I can add that. And what it's doing in the background, it's, it's basically duplicating that field, copying all the values, but it's changing the data type from text or string to number. And that's gonna allow me to then symbolize or um, uh, uh, visualize the data in that column by uh, color or color range. All right, it's worked. It's been added here, a land underscore num. And so what I can do now is I can actually choose that from my style by data column menu. And now it allows me to choose to style by ranges. I can choose, let's say five different buckets. I can choose a more visually stunning uh, uh, gr color gradient. And then there you have it. It shows by land area, the smallest in red, the largest in purple on this map. And of course, Google My Maps lets you visualize and change the different colors. And you can do that with a paint bucket like I showed you earlier. So it gives you a lot of different um, options to visualize your map. All right. So you can feel free to add links and other information such as websites, uh, links to online PDFs, and other helpful information to each feature on the map. For example, if you wanted to add some information about Nevada, you could go in here and actually click edit and start editing this information in the attribute. You can make this a hyperlink. You can add uh, uh, images or videos by clicking on this camera uh, icon here and searching for YouTube videos online or photos that are online. So far in the example I've shown, we've already had the data ready, but what happens if you don't have the data ready to import and you need to go find it yourself? Well, with a simple Google search, you can often find open geospatial data portals that allow you to um, download the KML data. For example, my, my uh, KML of the US states came from the US Census Bureau. And if you were to Google US Census states KML, you would see that the first result here sends you to a page where you can have um, by year, you can search, you can see KML files. Um, and these are KML files that are zipped. So I need to basically download them, unzip them, and then import as we did before. Uh, another example is um, the data set that uh, that let's be the change in Bangalore used. If I if I Google Bangalore Wards KML, my the very first result is the BPMP Wards BBMP Wards that are housed on the Open City Open Data Portal here. And so you can down you can scroll down and you can see yep these are the exact same um, ward boundaries that um, let's be the change used and you can download um, the KML there. If your data isn't in KML format, then you can convert from formats like GIS shapefiles into KML using most GIS software packages, or you can use some online tools such as My Geodata Converter. This is my favorite, and it allows for lots of different conversions between different geo and GIS data types. If you're trying to import a large data set, like a KML with lots of administrative boundaries or lots of detail, you may run up the five megabyte per layer import limit in MyMaps. That's five megabytes 
per KML layer. So consider using another tool such as MapShaper. MapShaper is a tool that lets you um, import your shape file, uh, simplify that data, and then uh, save out the new simplified data set, which then you can convert to KML. So I've done this where I've taken a very high spatial resolution borders of the US states, and I've imported it into map shape, shaper. And you can see that if I zoom in, you can see kind of how this works. This is a very detailed um, look of one of the state borders. But as I simplify it more, you can see that you can see it getting simpler and simpler. There is a threshold here where you don't want to oversimplify it, but you can see that it does get simpler and simpler. So you can choose which uh, simplification you would like. I probably would choose right about halfway because it looks like it's getting rid of some of the unnecessary nodes and vertices, but it's still maintaining the shape. I'd like to end with a few useful tools and or tips and tricks <laughs> to help you optimize your mind map and make it the most useful it can be to your map viewers. So tip number one is if you haven't already, add a title and description to your my map. A good description might be include some useful information about who created the map, so your name or organization name, what it should be used for, some introduction to it in the description, when it was last updated, and maybe even a way for viewers to get in touch if they want to suggest updates or give feedback to your map. Notice how the nonprofit Let's Be the Change went into detail in their description. Uh, I, if I click on this drop down, you can see that the organization uh, went into detail and described what the map showed and who authored it. So this kind of information is really useful for viewers of the map. And also notice how the Daily Voice added the last updated note to the title right here. Last updated November 12th, 2020. This is Im really important um, when your map shows data that might be changing very often. Be sure to set an initial zoom level that makes sense for your map. To set an initial zoom level or default view, move first the map to where you want the map to open when a viewer initially loads the map. Then click on the three vertical dots next to your map title and select default view. So here's what that would look like on my map. So you can see that I don't have a proper title. So I'll first add that, US states and capitals. That's a proper title, good. Now the little three dots next to it, I might want to start um, the, load, the, the initial map load here on all on the lower 48, or I might want to have the entire, um, all 50 states be in the picture. So if, with that, I can choose this default view and then click the three vertical dots and click set default view. That means that when my viewers um, load this map, that's the screen or that's the, 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 the view extent, the view portal where they're gonna see first. Tip number three, add styles for points, lines, and shapes on your map. You can customize the icon of your points or place marks, just the way I did on my state capitals, my map. A good example of a custom icon is the map that Urban Roots created. Urban Roots is a community-led environmental charity in Scotland and has been collaborating with the Glasgow Community Food Network to direct people to food banks and free meals in Glasgow. You can see how they created this great icon that shows the different um, uh, food banks and food pantries in Glasgow. And they even added a picture of what the front of the, of the building looks like so people can find it more easily. Next, a good example of styling lines is the map that was created by the National Transit Agency of Ecuador using my maps to help truck drivers who are moving food across the country find disinfection points and gas stations. I'm um, just clicking on a few here so you can see uh, they basically colored each major thoroughfare in a different color and then overlaid mechanics and other services um, along the way. And finally, a good example of styling shapes is this map that was created by a citizen in Maldives 
who created this ma- this really helpful map that displays local shops and pharmacies and businesses by zone in in the the community. Tip number four, embed your map on your website or blog so that people stay on your website and your blog. It's a great way to to do it. And you saw how Daily Voice did it for their um, article about uh, the the COVID cases in the tri-state area. It's a good idea to add a link to the full MyMaps viewing experience somewhere on your website, though, because then if viewers are on their mobile phone, they can click the link and go through to the MyMap for a better viewing experience. We hope that these examples provide some inspiration and practical instructions for how to do some lightweight data visualization using MyMaps. Thank you so much for joining me today and happy mapping.